Hey you guys, okay so today I am so excited. I've already done my makeup and everything, but I'm gonna take you through my whole like getting ready. I'm gonna show you guys kind of how I've been doing my makeup lately that I really like, using a lot of different products, a different foundation, um, all kinds of new stuff. So I'm gonna give you guys tons of updates because in my last video it was kind of like a vlog. I was in the car, I was talking to you guys, you missed that, it was really fun, and you guys seem to really like those. So thank you for thank you for watching that. I'm glad you, that you guys enjoyed that. But um, we're definitely gonna do some more of like those. I miss doing that type of video. But I kind of combined my favorites in that, and it ended up being kind of funny. I still didn't do my hair. Okay, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Um, it was kind of, it ended up being kind of funny because I was talking about favorites, but obviously I wasn't sitting at home with all my stuff. I was in the car, so I was just kind of like showing you guys a few things that I had, and we talked about like all kinds of different stuff and um, updates and all kinds of fun things. What is this? Okay, y'all, I don't even know. We've got to, I'm gonna tell you. We'll talk in just a second about this. This mascara, I was like, it's so great. It has been great. It was total garbage today. Like, I feel. I think, as I was using it, I was it, like, it looks really good. So I was like, this sucks. No, it's actually really good. It's, it's really good. And then, I'm like getting little flakes on my face. Okay, we'll talk. I'm um, just gonna keep it real. Just gonna keep that totally real. Um, but now that I have a few things here, there's a few things that I wanted to address. Obviously, I didn't have some of those things with me. Um, and a few things. Let me just jump in right now and tell you guys a few favorites. Um, we're gonna go into like the whole like look in a second. I start the video and basically I just dried my hair, which still haven't done anything to it. Um, but I thought I would just kind of get ready with you guys and take you through my makeup and kind of update about some different things and talk about some just random stuff. I don't know. So we're just gonna talk about everything, but we're just gonna talk about all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> No. This deodorant, you guys, is life changing. Oh, I gotta show you what I bought during that event too. When I was doing that vlog, my last vlog, when I was where I was going, um, I'll show you what I got in a second. But I, you guys know my whole thing with deodorant. I'm not gonna like tell you my whole history with deodorant, but I love natural deodorants. I've gone through several, like I've tried different ones, some very long term, and then I end up going back to just my cashmere mist, which I really, really like. It's a very good antiperspirant. This is the Kopari Coconut Oil Deodorant, and it's fairly new. You guys know I love the, co the Kopari Coconut Oil um, on my skin. So I thought, yeah, let's try it. I thought this was gonna smell like coconut. Let me tell you, I was not expecting this smell. It is like, the most heavenly scent of all time. Okay, totally using this right now. The most heavenly scent, it's like not coconutty. It, it, I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, there's a hint of coconut, but it is like the yummiest flower. You have to try it. You will just not understand until you try it. I was expecting it to smell like coconut oil, but here's the thing. So natural deodorants all the time are just so sticky, especially ones that glide on like this, which is almost like a gel. It's very strange. There's like no whiteness to it. Let me tell you, zero stickiness, okay, actually works. And here's the thing, when you first start using a natural deodorant, you'll use it once and you'll be like, oh my gosh, this doesn't work. Here's what you need to do. So really get your armpits like super clean, you know, scrub them, whatever, when you before you start. Use it and then use it again at night. I use it always, even years ago when I used my La Vanilla, morning and night always. And then I would take it with me sometimes. It's a sacrifice you make if you're gonna wear a natural deodorant. Sometimes I would just get away with it once a day. It just depends on what you're doing. I'm really shocked that this actually does work for me. I, it's just, it's just too good. Like I'd used it this morning, but then you saw I just glided it right on. Like the scent is so sexy and good. Uh, but I did want to update on that. Okay, and um, we'll talk about this because I do kind of feel like now it's garbage. What the heck happened, you guys? I have been using this stuff for probably three weeks. It's feathery, it's light. I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to share this. Am I hitting that point where it just sucks? I don't know, but it's like it was so clumpy today and it like started falling out. I'm gonna do a rant video because I've got another mascara that really, really threw me for a loop and, and tricked me, really tricked me. Okay, so I don't know. I mean, I like it because it's pretty. And even when I was using it in the video, I was like, oh, it's so fluttery. I have been using this nonstop. And I loved it. I used it yesterday and loved it. Something about today, I guess it just knew I was filming and it was like, I'm gonna F with you today. Before we get into the, like, the actual makeup look, let me show you guys one more thing that I feel like is a favorite because um, I, I feel like I need, to, I need to talk about this. Okay, so I got a new makeup mirror, you guys. And if you're kind of like an avid or like an ongoing like viewer of mine, you may have caught videos where I've talked about makeup mirrors and the saga. 
let me tell you, right here, I don't like to have cords, I don't like anything plugged in, but I like a mirror. I have my big mirror behind me, but I like something that's a little closer. It's, so I bought this years ago. These are pretty genius, the simple human makeup mirrors, right? This one is not charged, but you know, when you get it close to your face, it'll come on. The problem with this one is that it is just, um, well, it's really dirty, but it is just uh, magnified. So you have to get really close to it, right? That's the issue with me is I don't like to do my makeup. I like to kind of see it from somewhat of a distance so I can see the full picture and I don't need to be that close to my face. If I do, I like that option, but I don't like the option of not having a regular mirror. So, so while I love this and you know, I definitely recommend it and people love, like this is like something that people love. People love this mirror. It was a part of the anniversary sale. If you wanted one, I hope that you were able to get one. My mom loves this. She has one that like mounts on her wall. People love these. If you have bad eyesight, like such a good thing. But I just, I always wanted a double one. And I am so, I'm so flippin' excited, you guys. So I have this now. Now I keep this little clip on it when I'm filming because when you get close to it, you see it's like one of those deals where um, in a second the light will go off because it knows I'm not in front of it. And then when you get in front of it, it comes on like really beautiful. You can like dim it. It's just like you run your finger like that and you dim it. It's so cool. Um, but when I'm filming, you see it goes off and then it will come back on and it's like, oh, well it's not gonna come back on because it just, it just went dead. That's fabulous. Great, perfect timing. But the thing is, so what I do is I'll keep this on it. I knew that was gonna happen. I have not charged it since I got it and I've had it for a while. And when I film, I clip this to it so the light will stay on when I film. Isn't that funny? Um, so yeah, totally, totally went off. But here's the thing, here's the genius thing about this, you guys. So do you see this? A it has a regular mirror on it. And then it has this little magnification built into it, which I will say I don't dig because why? You've got the big one on the other side. You flip it and it's magnified. So sometimes I do like to do that. But I wish that the whole thing, this whole thing was just regular. I don't get why I need that if I can, it just takes off places that I can see. But it's fine, it's fine. And I, but that's, but it's cool and I love it. Oh my gosh, you gotta, that's so funny that it went dead right when I was talking about it. Oh, I love that. Now there's two options. This is the rose gold and this is like just the regular. But I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. They are a bit expensive. So if you wanted one, I hope that you were able to grab that one during the sale. Cause I think I'm just weird about this. I think most people really do like this. And if you are in a bathroom like mine where you can see yourself in a regular mirror, I get just having that one, but I, I really like that. So, okay. We'll get into the video. Uh, is there anything else to talk about? Yes, I wanna show you guys what I got during the event um, that I went to. I went to my friend's uh, Kendra Scott event that I talked about in that vlog. That's where I was going that night. And um, I ended up getting these earrings and they're kinda like, what are they called? Like druzy and they're very, can you see how sparkly they are? They're like a rose gold, just very sparkly, beautiful. I've all, like I've never been a huge Kendra Scott fan and just lately I've picked up pieces from them just very randomly and it's like it's all these different pieces I got one from the anniversary sale I bought that necklace just walking into the store with my friend on my birthday I told that story in my last video that that really nice necklace that I wear sometimes is Kendra Scott it's like gold and diamonds it's really pretty I am really digging it like I'm really into it so um, I've had this bracelet for a little while this one that has the little dangles that pulls, it has like a little thing. They have necklaces like this too, which I think maybe I would really like because I love like lariat style necklaces that you can adjust. So this one's really pretty. And their stuff's good about like coming in different metals. Like this one I think came in like rose gold, silver and black and all their stuff is like very, um, like they guarantee it, you know, like you can return, I don't know. Totally not sponsored by Kendra Scott anyway. I've just, for some reason, gotten a lot of this stuff lately. But during the event, I bought this bracelet, which let me show you how it looks on first. It looks like a little crown. It's just very delicate. So it stacks on top of things. But um, if you can see, it looks just kind of like a little delicate crown. It's very cool. So I don't know, very lightweight. So I got that and I got these earrings and they do have really fine jewelry like that necklace is expensive I know it was something that I kind of treated myself to on my birthday But um, a lot of their stuff is just like very affordable, but it's nice, you know, it's like all kind of like um, I believe she said it was like sterling and it's like plated. I don't know. Maybe not um, But something like that. She was saying it was all plated or something like with gold and then is that right? I don't know. Um, I wanted to do kind of a little intro like that and I just kind of wanted to keep it real today and come in here and 
just talk. So, um, so let's do the makeup and then we'll talk about even more stuff throughout the video. Okay, this is so weird for me, you guys. So I'm using a primer, which I never usually do. I've, I've always tried these and I've just never found one that I loved, but I really like this oil-free one, the Laura Mercier. And it's like a little, it's like a gel. That was probably way too much. I'm just gonna like dab it off. And let me tell you, like, I am not a primer, like, oh, you gotta do it, you know, it's not. Let me just tell you, like, if you use a good moisturizer and your skin is, like, in decent shape, you don't need to, like, pile on a whole ton of products. But I get it, like, I mean, I feel like it does kind of, might make it last a little longer. And you guys, it's nothing new. I have talked about so many that I love. It just makes your skin feel a little smoother. So I've had this for a while, the oil-free, but then, I just got this the other day and I thought, I'm gonna try this. I am such a foundation kick, which I have another one to show you guys soon. But this is the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation and I'm in the shade Vanilla. I wanted to show you guys this. I've been using the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation, which is good. I really like the formula of that one. The actual, the actual um, formula of this one is very, very similar. So this may be one that you wanna try and not get enough at all. Um, it's very long wearing. We're just gonna talk about like all kinds of stuff. We'll like catch up on everything, but. So the coverage of this is very like wiped out, like intense, I feel. It makes your skin look very like flat, but the finish is very good. It's like a natural finish. It's not too luminous, it's not too matte, but it is a really good coverage foundation. I feel like for the amount that I use, it covers like crazy, but you definitely, like some just look very like a lot flatter than others. So I gotta warm it up a little. So I like to use my uh, my Chanel Bronze Universal. So I don't know what it is. My nails have been growing like crazy lately. I have a few colors that I really like. I usually just do like a pale pink or a nude on my nails and then on my toes. I just painted them so I'm gonna show you. I always use this, the OPI Cajun Shrimp. For the last like several years I was really into like black but, um, but lately it's just been the Cajun Shrimp. I just think you can't go wrong. And that with like a nude or a nude or a pink always looks so pretty. Um, like it doesn't match, but it goes together really well. Okay, so then what I've been using normally is like just a pale pink. Like I did these five days ago and they're lasting really, really well. Let me show you what I'm using. So um, the stuff that I'm putting in my face is like super sheer. Like you just need to sheer it out like with just like a natural brush like this. Like don't paint it on, don't go nuts, but just kind of like dust it over. You see how I just gave my face some like life and then the um, next like makeup tutorial video that I do I'm gonna show you guys like all of the ways that I've been um, using like like just extras you know like when you want to be like extra glam or whatever okay so you could have done this before the bronzer it doesn't really matter that this bronzer is so good it's just it's really like okay it's just like it's a bronzing makeup base so it I mean you can use it without makeup it's really not like a bronzer, bronzer. It's just a different, like, cool product. I just really love it. Okay, so, but like, back to my nails. I've just been going with, like, a light, pretty pink. Years ago, I used the, bam the Bamboo Pink, the Nails Ink, you know? And when you get used to using that, something about these Nails, nails Ink brushes, they're, like, flat and curved, so you get that area, like, at your cuticle just perfectly, and they wear so nicely, and this color is the one of the closest I've, fa I've found, and it's called Vintage Tea, so I'll link to that. Or I use this, which is just a tad bit whiter. It's, like, a light whitish pink, and it's called Regret the Moon by Smith & Colt. So I like that, but the trick is to use this top coat, and it's the C&D Weekly Top Coat. I do things just in whatever order that makes sense to me. Sometimes like, I wait till the end to do my lips, but like I feel like there's sometimes when I'm doing my eyes and I kind of want to like see it all together. I look so wiped out when I'm filming when I don't have on lip liner. So I love, love, love this Chanel. It's, oh no, that's not. That is eyeliner. Let's not get those confused. Okay, the Chanel Undertone eyeshadow. And I just, Take a brush and do it like this. And sometimes I don't put anything over it. Most, ow, most of the time I don't. But, um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how I've been doing mine. I was gonna use a little bit of my new um, Tom Ford palette, but this is like day to day. This is what I do. Like I just don't put on any like powdery eyeshadow. I just do this most of the time. Uh, but when I do want a little something extra, this is just the. You guys, this is the perfect color. Oh my gosh, it wears so beautifully. But if I do want a little bit of an eyeshadow, I've been using this, and it's my new 
um, the Tom Ford Disco Dust. And I will tell you, this has the most perfect crease color. Okay, this color right here is so good. Um, and it just layers so perfectly over that Chanel. It doesn't look like too much. It just is so perfect. You guys. I do like a more dramatic look when I do that like really glam video. I might do that. And then if you wanted, you could use this little bit of like this cranberry-ish color and just a little bit on your eyelid. It just gives you a little something extra. And see, it's not hard. Like, it's not like I'm doing any crazy, like, techniques or anything. If you've got a good eyeshadow brush and you've got good colors, I mean, they blend really well together. Put a little bit of that sparkle color right in the middle if you wanted, but I'm going to leave it at that. But I'm going to go ahead and do my eyes. Um, just I just want to show you. This is, this is pretty easy. Okay, so now for the eyeliner. I've been loving this, the Chanel, and I'm just, I've just been using this um, brush that I was using for my brows when I was using like the brow pomade. But I'll be honest with you, like I have just been using that MAC Lingering Brow Pencil and it is, it is, oh my gosh y'all, it is the best. That's what I, that's all that I used to use years ago. And then I started using all this other crap. You know, you try other stuff. So like you can make a real precise line with this. You can like smudge it out a little. You can make it pretty soft. Before it sets sometimes, like I soften it up a lot with my finger and then just really go back and like get it right at the line to intensify it a little. I don't even do like a big wing. You see, I'm just really not that careful with it. Um, you can be and make, like I said, like make a really pretty wing or like make it look really precise. But I think it's pretty just to get it like right at the lash line. And um, it's just really flattering. And this stuff lasts like crazy, you guys. Like once it sets, it is on there. That's why I kind of like do it like this. Like I. I don't want to say like I blob it up, but like I really kind of pile it on. And then I take my finger and just smudge it a little bit right at the edge. Just like run your finger over it. You could take a Q-tip if you're like afraid to do that. But you see, you just kind of like softened it a little. And then you go back and kind of define it like right, like where it meets your lashes. Like darken it up a little, but the part you smudge, just leave that alone. Like, I just don't, I don't love it to look so perfect. I don't like to have such a perfect, like, outer little edge all the time. Sometimes I do that with this and make, like, a really pretty little wing. But, um, a lot of times I just like to wear it like this. Okay, so this mascara, you guys, it's the Hourglass, uh, Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. Let me tell you, so it's kind of like a fluttery formula. Like, it really builds, I don't want to say, like, in a dry way, but you know how some formulas are just super, super wet and they, like... They give you kind of a spidery, like wet look that you have to really separate. This one builds in like a very fluttery way, but it builds up to be very dramatic. So I'm gonna show you guys, I'm not gonna wear false lashes today. I'm gonna just like show you how dramatic it is. You guys, what do you wanna talk about? Like, I'm just gonna start as we go and I'll link to everything I'm using if I skip over anything. You guys really seem to like that last vlog and I love talking like that, just kind of off the cuff, like just random about you know, like my opinions on things or like things that are happening that have nothing to do with like the video that I'm doing. Uh, so I don't know. I, I feel like it's just kind of fun to talk about like situations and stuff like that. So when I talk about like, and I'm not going to get like too deep into this, but when I talk about like TV shows or something, I'm going to tell you guys this situation. You don't even have to watch the show to understand this, but it's something I was thinking about the other day. And I'm like, I wonder what most people think about this. So, you don't have to watch the show to know anything about this, but I just want to hear your take on this. Like I said, you have you don't even have to know who these people are. So, like, on The Real Housewives of OC, which I really like, I always have to come, I said I didn't have to come out, and I, like, got that little milk part. So, there's a woman that's on the show, her name's Kelly, and she has, like, a preteen daughter. She is, she was married, and she just got a divorce, and, um... She's friends with like Vicky, all the women on the show, right? So this woman's good. This woman Kelly's going through a divorce. And it's not like super friendly, but it seems like okay. It's not like Shannon and David, which like that's another story. And so Vicky's been her friend on the show. They've, they've all been her friends, like I said. But like so, like, so it comes out that Vicky, her friend, had, had set up Kelly's ex, which they're not even officially divorced yet on the show at that time. Um, Vicky had set up Kelly's ex-husband with, with somebody, like, at her house. And she acted like they just randomly met at a party that they were having. But again, Vicky had her ex-husband over at her house, which they're supposed to be good friends, you know. 
And I feel like it was probably a situation of like, oh, you know, I'm going to set you up with a friend. And I don't know, Vicky kind of seems like that. Like she's not super loyal. Like she is in the moment if she's having fun, but she's also like just loyal to whoever's going to like have fun with her and give her attention. So let me just tell you, because I'm going to pile on even more. So I don't want it to be like super clumpy. So, so then like, yeah, so she says, oh, they met up, whatever. But then it comes out that Vicky and her boyfriend, the one that like set up, you know, the ex husband or whatever, have been going on double dates with Kelly's ex-husband and the new girl. And she didn't say anything about it. And so then Kelly finds out and she's like, she confronts her. And Vicky was like, it's not a big deal. And I've seen people say like, it's not a big deal. Like they're divorced. It's not about that. It's about the fact that that's your friend. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's that hard to understand. I feel like it'd be a huge deal if like someone was double dating like the David guy on the show, you know, like going on going out with him. It's just weird, you know, and I get it, like, Vicky's but boyfriend is kind of friends with the guy, but I feel like Vicky at least needed to say, like, hey, like, they're friends, they want to go out together, like, how do you feel about this? I just, I felt bad for Kelly, and I feel like it's become, like, a big topic on the show, and people are, like, taking sides about it. What do you guys think about that? I thought that was so weird. Um, I'm totally, like, on Kelly's side about that, because... I'm not saying you can't do it or go out with them or that that's even wrong because some people are okay with that. I'm just saying like, you gotta tell your friend, right? And see how she feels about it. Someone was like, and then she was on like, Watch What Happens Live with Andy. Okay, this, this mascara is always so good and today when I wanna show you, it looks like garbage, okay? I'm just gonna be totally honest. Like I cannot, like it's good, but I'm like, I'm having the hardest time with it, like building up. But I mean, it's pretty though, right? It's like really, Maybe it's like the weather? I have no idea. Okay, she was on like Watch What Happens Live and Andy was like, well, Vicky, how would you feel if like someone double dated Brooks, like which is her ex, nuts so guy. And she was like, I love it, I don't care. I hate it when people do that. When you confront them about something and you like bring up the most perfect point, well, well, how would you feel if I did that to you? And you know good and well, they would go through the dang roof and they're just like, I wouldn't care at all. So that proves my point. I wouldn't care at all. So you're wrong. I hate that. I feel like that's what she did. But I don't know. I mean, who, who would care? I, mean, like, I feel like they'll get over it, but the show is pretty good. And then um, Southern Charm's over. I don't really have anything to say about that because I feel like everything just kind of worked out. I really don't. I don't think Thomas and Ashley are together anymore. I think they just broke up like this week. I'll be honest with you. Like, I've looked. Like, I'm like on Instagram. I'm like, are they still together? Like, please say no. But um, I'm just, I really feel like Catherine had like the best season. On Real Housewives of New York, are you guys team Bethany or Carol? If you don't watch this, let me explain. Again, it's just one of those situations like weigh, on, weigh in on this, you don't even have to see the show. Like they're friends, they had been friends for a while on the show, they were like inseparable, like they were always like the girls that were kind of like clicky together. And then all of a sudden like they're not friends, it's just weird, like they're just not friends anymore. Use my little powder because my under eye area is kind of like that. Um, really loving this hourglass veil still. Yeah, and then I just pile on a bunch of mascara, some black liner. Some days you don't even have to go super heavy with the liner at all. Um, I like to put a little bit of powder just right there in that little area, and I can dust off a little more of it later if it looks a little powdery. Just gonna put some there. And it kind of blurs that line a little bit. Someone said, because I was saying like that little area right there, I have, I've always had this, and I don't really have a lot of dark eye circles, but I have that area that's really shadowy because it tends to like dip in. And a lot of people get filler there and they do that, but my big thing with filler, and I'm totally like, I mean, who knows, you know? But I've never done that and I've never had any Botox, which I could totally see myself doing at some point, but I'm just not, I'm not really like there yet. I don't like a lot of, like I think if you do it in a certain way, it can look really good and natural, but like, I'm very funny about my eyes looking puffy. I've seen people that do filler and it just makes, it makes you look, I don't wanna say fat, but it makes you look swollen. And I'm not even talking about when it's done badly. I just don't understand, like I think there's a difference between making your skin look plump and pretty and just kind of round. I think you start getting that like round face. And I don't love that, um, but I really do try to like, when I think about, oh, I could do something like that, I really try to think and think, you know, well, I wanna resist that, cause I just don't know. Um, but one of you guys said, when I was mentioning that about my, cause I'm not against doing something, I'm just afraid of starting to do something there, and then my eye looks puffy, or I don't wanna look like, 
You know what I mean? Because that can happen. That does happen. So here's my thing. And I don't want my face to look, I don't want my face to look plump. But someone recommended, they were like, look into PRP treatments for that. Isn't that like the vampire thing? Like where they give you like, re I, I, mm -mm, nope, don't care. Not doing that. I would literally, I would faint. Like if I see blood, like any kind of like surgical, I just, I cannot handle it. I really like, I would flip out. I would be laying there naughty. It would not even be worth it um, for me. I don't know. But isn't that what that is? I don't know. Someone said try that for that area. And I'm like, I don't know. So I got to look into that. Cause she literally said, look into that. And I didn't, I just thought, isn't that what that is? No, I need to, I need to look at that. But so what do you guys think about that? I'm just a little afraid of, of doing anything there. And I'm like, is it not, is it even that big of a deal? I don't really think it is. Okay. So, um, with Bethany and Carol, I feel like I'm kind of team Bethany and Bethany really drives me nuts sometimes, but I do like her. Um, I think she's annoying sometimes. Like she acts like no one else. It feels like to me sometimes like no one else can be like successful or when people are talking about something they're doing, she gets a little threatened, which is odd. And I think it's because she's just so proud maybe of what she's done. Maybe she feels like she's still proving herself in some way, but to who, who cares? You know what I mean? Like no one cares. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I don't get that. So with Bethany and Carol, they were always like really good friends and then all of a sudden they're not. And there's really not like even a story there, like what happened, but it does seem like Bethany's trying with Carol and Carol's just kind of like pushing her away. It seems like Carol, for whatever reason that we may not even know about, is just done with that friendship. And it's like she's trying to be nice to her on camera like in that last episode where they went to Columbia and they, they had that horrible like boat experience, which I'll talk about that. It was just odd to me like that, you know, they, they kind of like made nice and whatever, but I don't think they're like hanging out in real life. It's just very odd to me. So something something happened. I don't know. Um, Bethany said that Carol's boyfriend, Adam, was a little weird when she asked him to do some kind of charity thing. But again, like, that doesn't explain. I'm just not sure why Carol's, like, it just seems like she's kind of pushing her away a little. Because they were really close. Or it seemed like they were. I don't know. And, like, Bethany gets all sad and, like, cries about it and, like, really tries to open up to Carol. And Carol's like, it's not a big deal. Just leave it alone. Like, everything's fine. I do think Carol does try to be a little cool, but she's not gonna be on there next season, so I don't wanna say I'm kinda happy about that, but I just felt kinda like it got a little boring, and I can't believe how much she's changed, like, just in the way she looks from the first to now. I was talking to a friend the other day, and I was looking at that, and I was like, whoa, she looks a lot different. And I don't even know if it's just her hair, like, she used to have, like, beautiful, long, you know, I don't know what it is, but it was very it was weird to look back and think, whoa, you know, she that's how she used to look. So yeah, brows, pretty good, right? This is the best brow pencil, I'm telling you guys. That color is just perfect. But it's all about the tone and the color, and I think that's why I like that so much, is just because that, that lingering color is just the perfect tone and color for me. It just looks pretty natural. Um, okay, what else? So I don't know. But yeah, Carol's not coming back. And the Kenya was fired from Real Housewives of Atlanta, which was kind of like something I didn't know until like just recently. So, oh, I've been loving this. It's the Kim KW. Oh, but back to New York. What do you guys think about that boat thing? Like they have been playing that up because it was like in the news and stuff. Like when, it, when that actually happened, they acted like, I thought it was like a boat fire. That's what I thought when they were talking about that on the news or not on the news, but like when it was like being reported and stuff, like when you saw it happen like six months ago because it was kind of like a story people were talking about and they were like oh you'll see it on the show I thought like they literally had to like abandon ship and it was like some not that what they went through wasn't scary I would have been freaking the hell out but um they played it up like that was just going to be the biggest thing of the season and it was like they didn't even really have any footage of it other than like just a couple minutes and they showed the outside of the boat a lot um but yeah that was just weird to me the whole thing was weird seems like they would have like had him inside and like wearing light vests and stuff they were just all flopping they were just all like hopping around out there it was weird i don't know what it is it has become my favorite and i am like living for sonia i don't know what it is like this season and the last season she's just so like messy and like oh yeah those are my underwear and let me just let me find some underpants i'm just like so nutty and hilarious and kind of like funny and real in a lot of ways but it's just but at the same time, she's like super kooky and you're like, what? I don't know. She's like full on entertainment. Oh, see, I have been enjoying. I'm using the, um, the orgasm. Yeah, but OC, I have been enjoying. 
Does that look too bright? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Vicky though, I just, but, but back to like, I guess we're talking about like people leaving and like people coming and going. I feel like Vicky's staying on just because like she's a business woman and she's like, it's smart. She's making money staying on the show. She's like the oldest, she's the first housewife ever because that was the first franchise and she's like the only one that's been there, you know, since the beginning. So she's the oldest technically housewife, the longest running. But like, I just, it would be shocking if she left just because I feel like it's so just, she's just there. You know what I mean? It's like, it would be weird if she wasn't there, but I feel kind of like it's running its course with her. Don't you feel kind of? Like sometimes I really like her and then sometimes, have I, do I really like her? I don't know, like she's just kind of there and sometimes I like her more than other times. Um, not that I like really dislike her now, but I just, I don't know, like it's, it's like something happens, that whole thing with Kelly. And Kelly's like, this is weird, Vicky. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Kel there, she's at Kelly's house, you know, like about the whole like double dating thing. And she's all like crying to her. She's like, are you kidding me? And Vicky's like, I gotta go, I gotta go. I gotta go sell, sell insurance. And it's like literally like nine o'clock at night. So like, I gotta go. Like everything with Vicky, if she's uncomfortable, she's like, I got a job. I'm gonna go sell insurance. Like I'm done, I'm done here, I'm done here. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I just feel like, it was sweet when her and Eddie made up though, but. Vicky's just, like I said, she's in the moment with whoever she's in. I don't think she's truly loyal to anyone. I think she's like, she's one of those friends that you just have a really good time with. And like her and Tamara love each other because they're kind of like, they've been in their lives for so long. But I don't think they're like good to each other. You know what I mean? Like I don't think they're really like there for each other. I don't know. Um, that was the Chanel highlighter, which I really love. It's kind of like a little shimmery, a little... Glowy. What I do when I don't wear makeup is I will, like on my makeup free days, I'll put on just a little bit of mascara, so not totally makeup free, but I'll take this on a fluffy brush or just honestly on the brush that comes with it because this is not bad at all. This is pretty good. And I just sweep it down like that. The woman at the counter told me to do that. She was like, yeah, if you're not wearing makeup, just put it here. And just pull it down and it's just beautiful. I did that and it is beautiful, okay? But yeah, I feel like Vicky kind of needs to maybe go at this point and I feel like Tamara... I like her, but she's just so like aggressive. Like when they were at that bar in Mexico, which that was really funny. Um, when Tamara or Shannon was like waiting with them at the airport with like shots and stuff. I like seeing them together. I think they're cute. But when Shannon's like crying about David, which I really, I get it. I totally get it. But I just, I wish she would just not do that. Cause I want her to like come out on top, which I think she will. With the whole, like at the very beginning of this season, cause there are only a couple episodes in where Shannon was like, cause you know, she got a divorce. They had the, the most beautiful house. I think that Shannon and David's old house was probably the most beautiful house, like on any of this. Cause it's very, it was very like traditional and pretty. I really liked that. But she was like, I went from 16,000 square feet to 4,000 square feet, like 4,000 square feet. Like, what am I gonna do? I don't know, like, it's just so funny to me. <laughs> but yeah, I really, but I really do like her. I wanna see her do well. And then, but like, but Tamara, so when they, that's what I was saying, like when they were at that whole like Mexico thing, like when they went on the trip together, Shannon's like crying a little bit, you know, all upset. And Tamara's like, you need to like get your boobs out. She's like, look, do this. And she's like putting her boobs in her face and stuff. And I'm like, Tamara's really aggressive. Like, she's very aggressive. Like, even like when they were in the jacuzzi and stuff, she was like screaming, I don't know. She just freaks me out a little bit sometimes. So, podcast, you guys. Let's talk about that for a minute since we talked about TV for a little bit, because I know you guys a lot of times really like it when I kind of give my opinions on like TV stuff. Or, okay, and I'm not, I, I know The Bachelorette, I think just ended, I don't watch that. I can't deal with it. I'm saying that now, I'll probably watch it next season and like love it, but I'm just saying, I, I, I The Bachelor, Bachelorette thing is so old with me, like I'm just done with it. I just cannot get into it. I'm over it. I've got the weirdest eyelash that's like hanging and dangling. But, ugh, golly. But so yeah, so that's that's mainly like the TV that I watch. Um, but podcasts, I'm just really into that. And I have told you guys, we've talked so much about ones that I like and recommendations. And I've even done like whole like videos, like when we did the whole like Dirty John one or like, you know, like when I recap things or when we talk about things, I ask you guys like what you thought, which they're making a TV show about that. Um, but like, there's so many things that are just so interesting and I've, I've listened to probably most of like the popular ones that you would think to listen to. Give me guys some, give me some of your recs, like ones that you like, ones that you're listening to. I probably know some of them or I, I, you'll be surprised. Like I listen to a whole bunch, but, um, but sometimes you just get in a lull and you're like, I need something new. But let me tell you, so a long, long time ago, several, several months back when we were talking about some podcasts, I don't know, and I was asking you guys for recs. 
one of you guys, actually several of you guys recommended the one called True Crime Obsessed. Oh, I was talking about the Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain documentary. And you guys said, you know, listen to True Crime Obsessed because they have an episode about that. So I am like all in to the to, to these two. I love this. I love their names are um, Jillian and Patrick. Is that right? Yeah. I love them. They are so freaking hilarious. So you think it's hilarious. It's like a, it's a funny true crime sort of thing. I know you're like, what? So every episode they recap like a different true crime documentary or even a podcast or something, you know, like sometimes have they done podcasts? Yeah, like I think they have a Patreon where they talk about like, um, like cereal and they did like the staircase. And so the episode will be de dedicated to like one documentary or something, right? At the same time, you're getting the story of this true crime thing because they're they're recapping it and they're playing actual clips of the documentary. So you're understanding the story. It's like you don't have to watch the documentary because they're recapping it. You're hearing the actual documentary and they are like commentating on it. It is so genius and good. Like I really, really like, I, I love them. So True Crime Obsessed is the name of the podcast. Definitely check that out. I really do enjoy them. And um, I think you guys would like it. It makes those stories, which I, I really enjoy a true crime story, I do, but they can freak me the hell out and get a little heavy. So I kind of like their take on it, you know, cause they're talking about the different people in it. Like it's just good. Okay. It's just really good. So I think y'all would like that. Um, but anyways, you guys, that's it. I have got so many good things coming up. You guys, we have so many good updates, so many things I cannot wait to share with you guys. And, um, and yeah, I love y'all so much. Thank you for watching today and for hanging out with me. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.